Okay, so after you gently tilt, tilt the carb over, then there is this plunger that holds the um, accelerator pump um, check valve. There's the spring for it, and this little ball bearing here is the actual check valve that went into this hole in the, uh, in the bowl casting. Now inside this large hole in the bowl casting there's another spring, and this is the return spring for the uh, accelerator pump plunger, and you can just take this spring out. If you look deep in the bottom of that hole, there's another check valve, but it's underneath the retaining clip, so you have to use the needle nose pliers to, to gently pull that out, the retaining clip that holds that in the bottom of this hole. And then beneath that is another uh, ball bearing check valve. Okay, so here are the components that came out of the uh, accelerator pump plunger hole. So here's the retaining clip. You can see it's nice to have, uh, it's a little springy, so it's nice to have some hemostats to grab it. Pretty hard to get it out because it's so small. And then we have the ball, and then the ball here, and then we have the spring. And notice that the ball that came out of the other hole is noticeably larger. So the smaller bowl goes underneath the big spring, underneath the uh, accelerator pump plunger. Okay, the next thing that needs to be disassembled is to remove the two nozzles. The primary nozzle here and the secondary nozzle here. We take out these four Phillips head screws and each one of them has two and there's a little gasket underneath it. So be sure to mark which one comes out of which hole because the primary and secondary are not the same. Okay, now the two nozzles are out. Some people call these Venturi's. Here's the gasket that goes underneath. They have a long emulsion tube there's the Phillips screw, and here's the primary one with the two rings, secondary one with one ring. Okay, the next thing we take out are what Toyota calls the slow jets, and here's the head of it. It's a small brass tube that has a slot in it. If you look very carefully with the magnifying glass, you'll see there's a number stamped into it, and generally speaking, the larger number it goes in one of the two holes, so they are. Po it's possible to switch these so you want to make sure which one went out of which hole. So either write down the number on it or tape it to a piece of cardboard and indicate whether it came out of the primary side or the secondary side because they're different sizes. Okay so this is the slow jet or the um, air correction jet that came out of the primary and it has stamped on it the number 65 from the primary. Here's the one for the secondary and it has a larger number the number stamped into this one is 90. Next we're going to remove the secondary vacuum actuator, this thing. So we have to remove a little uh, C-clip here that holds it to the rod. And we have to remove the two Phillips screws that hold the vacuum actuator case to the carburetor board. Okay, there's the C-clip that holds the end of the actuator. And then there's a little washer that's underneath it. Okay, so there's the vacuum actuator. And it has a little pilot stud, the two holes for the Phillips screw, and here's the vacuum port for the vacuum that makes this rod go in and out. And around this, there's a little fiber uh, gasket that fits into this hole here on the carburetor bowl. So the gasket goes here, the two screws, and the locating pin. So that seals the vacuum port for the vacuum actuator canister. Now you can test this by pushing the rod in and out and seeing if it holds vacuum and putting a piece of tape over the hole and seeing if the vacuum will hold. If the, um, if the if by covering the vent hole you can still push the rod in and out that means there's a hole in the diaphragm and you have to replace the diaphragm or else the secondary uh, barrel of the carburetor won't work at all. So if you test this and the vacuum actuator canister won't hold a vacuum then disassemble it to replace the diaphragm. So take these four screws out and then separate the two halves, remove the diaphragm, there's a spring underneath it and then you can uh, replace the diaphragm and check it to see if it really does have holes. Okay, So there it is apart, we've got the spring that goes on here, then there's the diaphragm and we can check to see if there's any holes and see if it, uh, if it has any holes and leaks. I'll put a little water in there and see if it leaks out see if it uh, really has any holes or if it doesn't hold the vacuum. I'll find out why and replace okay, it. So next up is to remove the power valve. The power, power valve is right here. We need a 9 millimeter 
uh, socket and the other thing that's pretty difficult about it is the socket has to be fairly deep to account for the height of the spring and uh, plunger and it has to be thin walled to be able to get in there so you might have to grind down the sides of a of a not so uh, thin nine millimeter socket in order for it to get in there and uh, remove that uh, power valve. So there's the power valve out and I was lucky enough because the cheap nine millimeter socket and one of my uh, cheap uh, socket sets was thin enough and uh, deep enough that it actually worked pretty well. So now we're going to remove the main jets and the main jets are in here so we have a primary main jet and we have a secondary main jet there. In order to do that we have to remove these two uh, bolt covers and uh, these are here so we can take the main jets out and you could even change them uh, while the carburetor is installed on the engine. You just have to take the top cover off and uh, be careful when you uh, change the main jets while the carburetor is installed that you don't drop something inside or lose something. Okay, so I've removed these plugs that uh, plugs for the bowl so you can get the, the jets out and each one of them has a copper gasket on it so don't lose the copper gaskets. They usually come in the kit to replace them and then you can stick a screwdriver in through the hole in the bowl to uh, get the primary and secondary main jet out. Now just like the air correction jets or the slow jets the, the main jets are uh, also different sizes. In general the secondary jet is larger than the primary and the other thing that uh, way of telling them apart is usually on Toyota carbs the uh, secondary jet is chromed and the other one is brass. So when you take them out make a note of the number that's stamped into the top and either tape them to a piece of cardboard so that you'll know where they go back or write down what the number is and whether it's the primary or secondary jet or do both because you don't want to mix them up. It won't run right if you don't get it right in the get the main jet right in the right. Uh, so there we are turning the screwdriver to remove the primary main jet comes right out fortunately and then there's the secondary so there's the two main jets this is the primary and it has a number of uh, 124 stamped on it there's the secondary it's supposed to be chrome but it looks like the chrome is uh, worn, worn off a lit, little bit and it has a number 230 stamped on it. And each one of them has a little metal gasket that goes underneath to seal them. Now you want to inspect the bore of these jets very carefully with a magnifying glass to make sure there's no dirt or uh, debris or um, things that would interrupt the flow of gasoline through there. And uh, it's easy to get fooled so you want to really make sure that the main jets are clear and unobstructed.